Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala mabad ayyul ahabati fillah ISIS or the Islamic State as they call themselves Ash-Shabaab in Somalia Boko Haram in Nigeria Al-Qaeda, which is worldwide. <clears throat> and all of these groups are extremist groups which do not represent Islam. And it's important for the youth to have clarity in these issues. And I want you to take a look at some things. And we're going to take a look at some of the text, the Islamic text, the Sharia text. These groups claim to propagate the Sharia with their secret bayah and their adherence as many of those sects that went uh, that preceded them also had these characteristics but I want us to take a look at some of the characteristics of the original sect which also exhibits this traits and see if you see something in common listen to this hadith from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying there shall come in the last days a people who are young in age and imbecile in understanding. They will speak with the statement of the best of creation. They will shoot through Islam just as an arrow shoots through hunted game. Their iman will not pass beyond their throats. So kill them wherever you encounter them. So there is a reward on the day of judgment for whoever kills them. And this was related in Sahih al-Bukhari and in Sahih Muslim and in Abu Dawood. Ahabatifillah, take a look at these groups like ISIS, Ash-Shabaab. Ash-Shabaab means the youth. And Boko Haram. You rarely find any elders and people who have gained wisdom and insight into the religion. As the original group, the Khawarij, didn't have any people of wisdom and knowledge with them. They understood the Quran by their own understanding, which is similar to the way Boko Haram, ISIS, and the uh, Ash-Shabaab understand Islam by that same menhaj, that same methodology of understanding. And those were the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who no one disputes. But I want us to take a little further look. Let's look at some of their characteristics and see what we can deduce. Stated Abu Aliya radiallahu ta'ala anhu O Rahmatullah Alayhi one of the tabi'een, he died in 90 Hijri over 1,300 years ago approximately. He said, I, heard, I read the Quran Ten years after the death of your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah bestowed upon me two blessings. I do not know which of the two is better. That he guided me to Islam or that he did not make me of the Hororiya. The Hororiya are the Khawarij. Those groups who declare other Muslims to be apostates for their major sins. And because they fought them or they disagreed with their ideology. Does this not sound like some people that we are dealing with in this day and age? You disagree with us, you've apostated. You disagreed with us, we're gonna behead you. We disagree with you, we're gonna put suicide bombings in your society and cause you harm. This is the same minhaj, the same methodology. So don't sleep, ahabatifillah. Why can't we ever support a group like ISIS? First and foremost, Ahabati Fillah, let's look at their brutality. We do not see, as Ahl Sunnah, we do not believe in the killing of journalists, beheading of tourists, like in Algeria, what's recently taken place, or aid workers in Iraq or Syria, and attacking shopping malls like Al Shabaab in Kenya. Uh, we do not believe that these are legitimate targets. And we do not believe that these things 
have anything to do with Islamic Jihad or affiliated even with the pristine religion of Islam. Sheikh Abdul Musan al abad one of our great scholars who teaches in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu his masjid in uh, Medina, he said regarding ISIS or IS, whatever you want to call them, he said after many years into the war in Syria between the regime of, al, uh, of Bashar al-Assad and the opposing fighters, many have got involved who do not actually want to fight against the regime. Rather, they fight and murder Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, who are opponents of the regime. It is also widely known that whoever they want to kill, they kill with knives in the most brutal and reprehensible ways of human execution. Sheikh Saleh al Suhaimi, another one of our great scholars who teaches in the Haram, in Medina, he said they intend to establish the Khalifa for the Muslims and brothers they have slaughtered in Iraq neither he meaning Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi nor his opponent from the Rafida are upon goodness meaning that the Rafida Shia who we don't even believe are Muslims are not upon goodness and neither is ISIS. We have to warn against both paths. This Dajjal, he, he referred to Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi as a Dajjal, a great lying, deceiver, wicked devil, is more evil than the preachers to falsehood. For he has slaughtered the Muslims in Sham, meaning the Levant and others, slaughtered the Muslims in Iraq, and he cooperates with the tyrant in Sham to slaughter Muslims, meaning Bashar al-Assad. For this reason, the tyrant of Sham is totally withheld from fighting against him up until recently. He does not fight against him as he supplies him with petrol from Dar, from Diyar al-Uzr. Uh, A Muslim should not fight with any of these parties and groups whatsoever as they are all upon misguidance whether it is the state of uh, the Rafa, the Shia, or the state of Iraq and Sham, or the so-called Khalifa, all of them are against Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So do not become occupied with them, and we have nothing to do with them. We also do not believe in suicide bombings, and we do not believe they are martyrdom operations, regardless of whether they are in Muslim or non-Muslim lands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, do not kill yourselves. Verily, Allah is ever merciful. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about the man who fought bravely in jihad and killed himself after receiving many injuries from the enemy. He said, verily, he is from the people of the fire, showing us that we can't kill ourselves, even if you uh, believe you're even if you're hurting your enemy and killing your enemy, you cannot blow yourself up. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered Bilal to call the prayer, radiyallahu taala anhu. And he said, "No one enters paras paradise except a believer. And verily, Allah may uh, may aid his religion with a wicked man." And this is in Bukhari. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Whoever kills himself with iron, then he will be stabbing himself with that iron in his stomach forever, everlasting in the hellfire. And whoever drinks poison, killing himself, then he will feel it forever in the hellfire. And whoever throws himself from a mountain, killing himself, he will be throwing himself likewise in the hellfire forever. This should be a stern warning that those people who strap on suicide, uh, those vests with bombs, believing that they're going to kill their enemy. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And they blow themselves to bits that perhaps they will be of those people in the hellfire who will be blowing themselves to bits continuously, forever. Wa'iyadhan billah. May Allah protect us from this evil and the evil deception of the takfiriyin 
wal khawarij wa ahl jihad batil the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah explain that this prohibition is general for any kind of suicide. Whether you put the suicide belt on, or, <coughs> or you've just killed yourself out of uh, depression or what have you. Regardless if it is, if uh, if it is called a martyrdom operation or harming the enemy, the rule for fiqh principles is that al ibra bi haqaiq leesa bi musammiyat that the truth or the reality of something is not in its name and what it's called but it is in the reality or its substance of that so for example they call it they try to dress it up in Arabic they say uh, they say it is a martyrdom operations they call it however it's still suicide regardless of whether they address they give it a new name. And likewise, some people, they try to justify taking interest. They say, it's not Reba, but we've changed the name. It's called Benefits, or it's called um, uh, Other Profits on Your Money, they, they call it. They reinterpret and give it a new name, but the reality of the transaction is still prohibited in Islam. Likewise, with these suicide bombings, there's still a type of killing oneself. Imam bin Baz, one of the great imams of this era, Rahmatullah was asked about the one who blows himself up to kill his enemies. And he stated, this is not correct because he has killed himself. And the law states, do not kill yourself. Those attacks have become a main tool for takfiri, jihadi, hisbi groups who use terror and extremism to recruit young ignorant Muslims. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked by Abdurrahman ibn Awf عنه, and two companions who said, O Messenger of Allah, we possessed honor when we were pagans and now that we believe we are humiliated. He said, Verily I was sent with pardoning, therefore do not fight. That doesn't mean at all times that there's no jihad or that there's no fighting. That's not what we're saying, but we're showing you that Islam does not legislate that uh, these these actions that we see that are taking place in many places uh, in Iraq and Syria and so forth where people uh, groups of fighters are coming together or just single individuals claiming jihad and killing uh, Muslims and just killing everyone that this is not Islamic jihad and this is not legislated by the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so fighting is not in all conditions and there are times for peace and there are times for business transactions and to operate as regular human beings do that this is what Islam first and foremost uh, comes with that Islam sets the precedence for the rest of the world with the best of characteristics and honor most of the activities and brutality of these groups are aimed at Muslims and this is something we have to be aware of either because they do not feel they are legitimate, look at al-Nusra and uh, ISIS, how they fought one another. Oh, ISIS says, you did not, you're not legitimate Muslims because you don't take the bay'ah to us, because you don't submit to our Khalifa, so we will kill you, and you are apostates, and we'll cut your necks. This is what they say. And the other group, al-Nusra, who we don't support, they likewise kill ISIS with the same, uh, the same mentality, the same ideology. So the brutality of all these groups, a shabab ISIS, and the ones who will come later and the many ones who came before them, and Boko Haram, is that they kill and slaughter uh, anyone who opposes them. And they believe that anyone who opposes them from amongst the Muslims is not a legitimate Muslim, that they are apostates. And they declare them to be legitimate targets. So they declare them apostates and kill them similar to the early sects like the Khawarij. Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala said about them, they kill Ahla Islam and leave Ahla Uthan, meaning the pagans. Meaning that one of the characteristics of the original Khawarij, this is 1400 years ago, mind you, is that they killed the people of Islam and they left off the pagans. Likewise, what we see, the fighting of most of these extremists is they begin as one of their thinkers who wrote the book uh, Farida al-Ghaibah he wrote uh, the obligation 
the uh, uh, the uh, the un the non-practiced obligation, so to speak, you if you want to interpret it, translate it, and he was stating in his treaties that the what's necessary is to begin with those closest around you as far as fighting, meaning that they fight Muslims who they they have declared apostates, the regimes, they begin fighting them, cleaning house, so to speak. And then they will begin fighting disbelievers. This is their ideology. This is their medhab and minhaj. And this, uh, this is similar to the original Khawarij. And killing anyone unlawfully, as Allah has stated in the Quran, is as if you have killed all of mankind. The Prophet ﷺ said, they will manifest in every century. And whenever a faction of them manifests, it will be severed until the Dajjal will manifest amongst them. Letting us know that the Dajjal will appear also amongst the Khawarij. And that the Khawarij would continually to manifest themselves. So every time they cut the head of one of these violent extremist sects, others grow out of it. And this was the case throughout the history of Islam, that these extremists appear in different forms. And now we have them appearing especially because we do not have a Khalifa, we do not have a unified uh, leadership for the Muslims everywhere. We have different states and different problems and different uh, nationalism and other ideologies that have, corrupt, that have corrupted uh, uh, the Muslims. So therefore you have different groups, you even have single individuals which you have not really had in the history of Islam who uh, believe they're doing a jihad. Like we have in America, we have individuals who have committed crimes, killed people, saying that this is in the name of Islam. Going into the bars and nightclubs of homosexuals and setting it on fire. This has nothing to do with Islam. This has nothing to do with uh, jihad. This has nothing to do with commanding the good and forbidding evil. But instead, this has to do with bringing a greater harm and a greater evil to extinguish a minor evil. That you have brought something greater, a greater trial, a greater fitna for the Muslims everywhere by being a lone terrorist, a lone shark or a lone whatever they call them, a lone wolf, a lone sleeper cell. You've not aided Islam one bit, like they have in Australia, these individuals who are being arrested. One guy, he stabbed a couple of police officers. What has he done for Islam? What has he done for his soul? He has oppressed others. And he's oppressed his Muslim brothers. This has nothing to do with, with Islam. And this is a new type of extremism that we face and that we have to speak out against and we have to fight with our fist if it takes as well. Ahabatifillah spreading wickedness and hatred throughout the earth. This is achieved by causing non-Muslims to despise, hate, and distrust, and oppress Muslim minorities, as well as cause oppressive Muslims to be even more oppressive and restrictive towards Muslims and the correct propagation of Islam, as well as spread doubt amongst the ignorant, zealous youth who they recruit under the guise of being brave and standing up against the West and other perceived threats. One of their zealous youth, Western spokesman Abu Usama, Somali Kennedy speaks about how he joined ISIS and he stated, here's what he stated. I listened to this today. He said, I read the Quran in the newspaper. This is how I joined ISIS. This is what encouraged me. So you take your religion from your understanding, interpretation of the Quran and the newspaper. Fox News and that is, is sufficient. Or BBC or CNN or Al Jazeera, that's enough to formulate your view of your religion and to act upon it. Let's take a look at that, Ya Habatifillah. So he said, I read the Quran in the newspaper. That's what encouraged him to join ISIS. What about the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And the scholars who preserved Islam, the Salaf of this Ummah, throughout time to understand your religion. What about those and the principles 
of, of, the, of Islam. By Allah, these people fit the description of the original Khawarij, the most extreme of the sects who will dwell in the hellfire. They fit that description perfectly. The Prophet, let's, let's take a look at what Abu Osama, uh, uh, the Somali immigrant to Canada, what he said. And let's take a look at what the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said. Let's put it on the scale. Let's put his, his statements on the scale of the description of what uh, these, this sect uh, would, that would appear amongst the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam, what they would do in the brutality and the violence that they would and the evil that they would spread around the earth. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, Al Khawarij Kilab al Nar, that the Khawarij, they're the dogs of the hellfire. They are young, he described them as young, ignorant, with little experience, and that they would declare other Muslims who disagree with their ideology to be apostates. Isn't this what ISIS does? The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, from this very person, he was talking about the, the originator of the sect, Dhul Khuaysara, his name was. Uh, because he came and he grabbed the Prophet wasallam and he said, be just. He said this to the Messenger of Allah, one of the prophets of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, be just. You're not being just. The Prophet wasallam responded about this man after he, he let him, gave him a pass and didn't uh, you know, even though he had threatened the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his companions, Radhi Allah Ta'ala Ajma'in, wanted to have his head, but the Prophet Sallallahu being the most gentle of mankind and setting the most beautiful of examples, he said, "Leave him." But what he, but he gave us the description of this individual, the people who would arise from this individual. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said. From this very person's uh, posterity or progeny, there would arise people who would recite the Quran. Isn't this what Abu Osama said? He got it from the Quran, from his understanding of the Quran. You, ha uh, you uh, would arise a people who would recite the Quran, but it would not be go, go beyond their throat. They would kill the followers of Islam. Isn't this what Ayman Zawa Zawahiri and all the Tekfiri, uh, Khariji, supposed jihadi groups like bin laden and zarqawi and those who came before them isn't this what they do don't they spend most of their time killing muslims of course they do there would arise a people who would recite the quran but it would not go, go beyond their throat they would kill the followers of islam and would spare the idol worshipers they would glance through the teachings of islam so hurriedly just as the arrow passes through the prey. If I were to ever find them, I would kill them like Ad. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said he would fight them. He would fight them and they were counted amongst the Muslims, although 